Hi there. So, um, I'm going to make an apple galette now. And uh, this is a really nice rustic looking pie that uh, I have made quite a few of them through the years. And they've kind of evolved into what they are. But um, so for this, we have three to four large apples. These happen to be honey crisps. Normally I would use some of our apples, but um, the only apple tree that had apples this year was uh, our old Gravenstein, and we only got about maybe four or five of them that the elk didn't devour before we could get to them. So um, I bought some honey crisp, and these are really nice big, big apples, so there was um, three or four in here. Anyway, you just slice them so that they're in pieces about an eighth of an inch thick. And I never peel my apples. I think it's kind of a waste of time and a waste of a good skin, you know. Apple skin, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, I have never peeled apples for an apple pie. And I think they're pretty anyway with the skin on them. So anyway, so we have um, three or four big apples in here. And uh, I put three tablespoons of fresh squeezed lemon juice on them to keep them from browning. And then I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of sugar and gently stir them around. And to that, see maybe what I'll do is I'll add the, this is a quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg. I'm going to add that into the sugar so it gets worked into the sugar really well and disperses better. And on top of that, we are going to have about a tablespoon of toasted fennel. Oh, and I've got to find my dried cranberries too. So anyway, um, this is a tablespoon of toasted fennel. And how you toast it is you just take your fennel and put it in a dry, small frying pan on top of the stove. And you just toast it until they start to pop. You don't want to take it too far because they, you can burn them. And burnt fennel isn't very pleasant. But in this apple galette, the fennel is wonderful. It is really, really good. And you just want to gently stir these so you don't break up the apples a whole lot. Let's separate these out some. So we've had three tablespoons of lemon juice in this added initially just as soon as I cut the apples. And we're going to add a quarter of a cup of crevassier. And you can use just plain um, brandy as well, but this really does make a difference for the flavor. It really is nice. And crevassier happens to be one of my favorite things to add to things when I'm cooking. It gives everything a nice flavor. So a quarter of a cup of crevassier is added into this. And brandy works too. I think sherry would probably be pretty good in this too, rather than a, a hard alcohol. Rum would probably be good too. And then once we get this all stirred up together, we're going to let it set. Because we want the juice to be created down in the bottom of the pan with the apples because we're going to take that off and make caramel with it to go over the galette when it's done. Anyway, I'm going to go look for some cranberries. I'll be back. So I'm going to just add some until it looks about right to me. You can add as few or as many or not at all. You don't have to have cranberries, but I think it really adds something to the pie. handfuls. Yeah, we'll go ahead and add the rest. And gently stir it. You just want everything moistened with the lemon juice and the crevassier. Okay, and now so we're going to uh, cover this and we'll let it set for maybe an hour or so until enough juice develops down in the bottom. Here we go.
go. Okay, we'll be back. Okay, we have our apples. They've been ma uh, macerating with the sugar and lemon juice and cuvassier with the uh, toasted fennel and the cranberries. And they've uh, gotten pretty nice. There's plenty of juice in the bottom, which is what we want. But we're going to just take the apples and place them in the pie crust like this. We're not going to uh, put the juice in there. We're going to make a cut, uh, caramel sauce with the juice. So we'll get these into the pie crust and then we'll go from there. This is really a nice rustic pie. I've always really liked this particular making pies this way. You don't have to trim the crust up or anything. You just roll it out and fit it on parchment paper on a baking sheet and then fill it with the fruit. The toasted fennel is really a nice addition for this. It really makes it quite tasty. And this was just three large apples to make this amount of sliced apples. They were big ones though. They probably came in at maybe a pound each. Then we're going to put this juice into a saucepan and cook it down until it's caramel. We're going to add some butter to it. And it is really, really quite tasty. You can even add nuts to this if you'd like, you know, to the, the fruit filling. I frequently actually put chopped walnuts in this. And then you just pull the crust up, the pastry, up over the edge and just kind of fold it into place. If the uneven edges bother you, if you don't like to have uneven edges, if that's something that um, is something that you don't care for, you can also trim the edges so that you make a circle. But I kind of like the rustic appeal of this. Okay, so now I'm going to brush the pastry with heavy whipping cream and then I'm going to put some uh, sparkling sugar on it just for that little extra oomph. It only takes about a tablespoon or so of the heavy cream to brush on the, the pie. And this flaky buttery pie crust recipe is um, will be linked at the end. Here we go. This will go into a 425 degree oven for 15 minutes and then I'm going to reduce the temperature down to 375 or 350 depending on how quickly it's browning and if I need to I'll cover it with a piece of parchment paper if it starts getting too brown. But anyway so you just have to keep track of it 425 for 15 minutes and then reduce the temperature down to 375 or 350 depending on how your oven works. Anyway I'm going to get this in the oven now and uh, it'll take it probably about an hour to bake total um, but you just have to you know adjust your time and temperatures to come out with the proper kind of coloring that you want and the doneness. Okay so um, this morning we baked the pie off last night but this morning we're adding the caramel sauce which really isn't actually caramel sauce it's more of an apple pie juice sauce but this is just amazing. It really adds so much to the pie. Uh, what you take, you do is you drain the pie, the, uh, the pie filling off, and, and then you, uh, I added an extra tablespoon of lemon juice to the sauce and a couple tablespoons of butter. And then I boiled it down so that it was nice and thick. And you can see that it has a pretty good consistency to it. It's really pretty thick. 
<clears throat> and then you pour it into the pie filling and uh, it just really adds a whole lot to this pie. It's just incredible. So with a nice blop of whipping cream or vanilla ice cream, this will set you up for a really good dessert or a snack in the middle of the day. Anyway, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Hi, Vember. And the pie crust is linked at the end of the video.